In this video, I go over the pros and cons of living in Oklahoma in 2021. Everything from Oklahoma's amazing parks to our crazy housing market. Yeah. If you're thinking about moving to, relocating to, or moving within Oklahoma, this is definitely a video you're going to want to check out. Stick around and share this video with all your friends and family who know that you're thinking about moving to Oklahoma. A little bit of introduction. If you're new, if you don't know who I am, my name is Josh Barnett. I have a channel on moving to relocating to Oklahoma. The agents that I work with and I use that channel to help educate buyers who are moving to and buyers just moving within the state get a little bit better idea on the state of Oklahoma. So if that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever any of our new videos drop if you click that little bell icon too. I have to give you a disclosure. These videos, they don't create a broker relationship. Videos aren't real estate advice. They're not financing advice. They're not legal advice for entertainment purposes only. And don't forget, if you're moving to or moving within Oklahoma, click the link below in the comments section to book a consultation call so we can go over your real estate needs. The group of agents that I work with and I are here to help you when it comes to moving to or moving within great state of Oklahoma and nationwide. We even have some agents that work in different countries too. So if you're thinking about moving to France, Spain, um, let me know. Let's get in today's videos, the pros and cons of living in Oklahoma in 2021. Pro number one, the parks. I love the parks. And if you've seen my any of my other videos on this channel, you'll know that I love the parks. I'm always talking about the parks. Well, the great state of Oklahoma has some amazing parks that you're definitely going to be able to enjoy on your days off or even if you want to take a long lunch break. There's lots of parks throughout all the cities and definitely some great state parks. So let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. Let me transition over. Boom. Okay, this is TravelOK.com. TravelOK.com. And you go there and all I did to get to this area was what did i do oh yeah i went down to the bottom where it said maps so at the very bottom i just scrolled down i clicked on maps then i clicked on state park maps and it brought me right here but look look at this map look at this so travelok.com scroll down to the bottom clicked on map and look here are all the great map uh, state parks that you can go to so let me just zoom in real quick and show you so if you're living in the okc metro area you just you, let's say you want to go this is a uh, Thunderbird I believe uh, you've got uh, Romano's State Park over in Watonga you've got Foss State Park over I think that might be Clinton or Hinton up here in Tulsa you've got the Keystone Lake Park that's not it's it's outside Tulsa I forget the Os Os Osage maybe um, but look lots and lots of fun state parks that you can enjoy i'm just zooming in right here i'm trying to look at the other state park i guess that's a federal park but um but these are all your state parks here in oklahoma there's lots of hiking to do lots of camping to do rv camping tent camping just check each park's website to verify what they have and the availability too now that summer is kicking off in oklahoma we love to enjoy our weekends doing some camping and some hiking. So that is my pro number one for living in Oklahoma. So what is a con in living in Oklahoma? Summers. Summers get hot. They get super hot. They get so hot. Oh my gosh, I just hit the mic. They get so hot that sometimes if the AC is not on, let me raise that. There we go. If the <laughs> if the AC is not on, it'll actually melt vinyl windows. It'll actually melt vinyl windows in houses. I've seen it myself. Not making it up. It gets hot here in the summers. Pro number two, when you're living in Oklahoma, that's enough of the con. Pro number two, when you're living in Oklahoma, lower cost of living. We do have a lower cost of living. And what I'll do is I'll put up here in the tags. I'll put up here in the tags right here the cost of living video that I did so you guys can watch that. Everything is low except for property insurance and healthcare costs. Property insurance and healthcare costs 
everything is low on the national average. Our utilities are about average and our food costs are about average, but everything else is lower and the, the automobile maintenance is on average. So that is a huge plus when pro when you're living in Oklahoma. What is another con? Con number two today in 2021 is you do have to drive everywhere there are some you know niche pockets in some of our university towns uco and edmond norman ou around ou there stillwater and around the university there oklahoma state university bethany around southern nazarene no just nazarene there's a university in Bethany that's pretty walkable too, but around your universities are going to be your most walkable areas in Oklahoma. But con number two for living in Oklahoma is you can't, you can't, you got to have a car. You do have a car. I mean, unless you want to walk three, four miles, if you want to walk three, four miles, you don't have to have a car, but that's, that's a long walk for things. Let's go on to pro number three. We have a lower cost of housing. Now, right now, that is adjusting a little bit, but overall, before the pandemic happened, before our state started receiving tons and tons of people moving from other states to Oklahoma, our cost of housing on average was only 54% of the national average. So that's super, super affordable. Now, it's probably upticked some because we've seen housing prices increase like crazy over the last year to eight months the house prices have increased like crazy but the um before that the average cost of housing was only 54 percent on average but it's definitely gone up since then so it's still a pro because it's not gonna be anything like your um east states your west states states right there on the ocean you know things like that our our housing costs will still be far low so that leads me to con number three con number three right now is way too many people fighting for houses oh my goodness there is just so many people excuse me ah a little bit of bacon from this morning gross that was gross but anyways um so many people fighting for houses right now con number three so many people fighting for houses every single house is receiving multiple offers that i've been involved in and it's it's uh and that's why we're having to do certain things like use the escalation clause that the oklahoma real estate commission put out to be able to help people win houses and ensure they're not paying way too much over for the house and then i know that some people have had to put in appraisal gap differences sentences sentences that say hey if the appraisal comes in five short or ten short that they'll cover that so you know that's always a risk reward that you have to do on your each own individual basis but right now con number three way too many people fighting for homes pro number four we have really really great spring and fall seasons really really great spring and fall seasons now i know that we do have tornadoes during our spring season yeah that 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 sucks but that's just part of living in oklahoma less the tornadoes our spring and falls are great weather super nice weather great for hiking great for camping great for being outdoors throughout the whole day you know we're not hitting 110 120 yet in the spring and fall seasons our spring and falls are super mild super beautiful you see the trees start budding in the spring and then you see them change colors in the fall I mean, you can just drive around for hours and enjoying all the trees and all the everything in the spring and fall. You, you, in the spring, you see the hay start growing, the corn start growing. And in the fall, you know, you're, you're seeing everything just get ready for the winter. And if you go to the national parks, if you go to the state parks, you'll really, really get to enjoy the foliage. Foliage, that's what it's called during the spring and fall. So that is pro number four. Uh, you guys are going to love some of these. I, I enjoyed putting this list together for 2021. You guys are really going to enjoy some of these. And of course, too, hey, comment down below on uh, your pros and cons. You know, what are, what are some of your pros and cons of living in Oklahoma? That way, people get more than just my opinion. You know, mine 
Mine is just a opinion, not the opinions. So, okay, perfect. Okay, let's get back to it. Con number four in Oklahoma. We have fast lane laws. It means you use a fast lane for passing. That's what it means. And you can get tickets if you're just doing your normal driving. Why won't this go up? There we go. I might have to take off the auto zoom. And I think I've said that before on other ones. So we have fast lane laws. Don't drive slow in the fast lane. The fast lane is used for passing purposes only. That is what we have in Oklahoma. I'm not an attorney. Verify that on your own. But we get slow people in the fast lane. It is so aggravating. I keep hitting my mic. It is so aggravating when you're going places and you have people, let's say, for example, the speed limit is 65. And you have people doing 60 in the fast lane. And it's like, are you serious? So everyone's having to pass the slow person in the fast lane going the speed limit in the slow lane. Like, that's that's not how that's supposed to work, especially for our on and off ramps. Like, think about those poor people who are getting on the highway trying to speed up because Oklahoma's on ramps are horrible, too. So that that's that maybe ah, that should be on my con list. Oklahoma's on ramps are horrible on and off ramps. Horrible. Um, in my experience, um, they're too short or, or they turn too tightly. They're like, oh, you're off the highway. Now go 25. And it's like, what? What? Now, I didn't even have time to slow down. But slow people in the fast lane is my con number four. And it leads to more and more cons throughout the whole driving experience. Just um, hilarious. So, <laughs> uh, enough of the con. Let's go back to pros. Pro number five. We have, we have actually pretty mild winners, I would say. I don't think there's too many times, typically, that we go below the um, the freezing mark. We do go below the freezing mark, but but it's for short periods of time, and it's for not that often. We did have a horrible, horrible winter storm this this last winter that was horrible. Tons of outages, tons of everything. Texas and Oklahoma and a lot of your southern states experienced that. But besides that, we, we don't really have bad winters. Winters are pretty mild here in Oklahoma. You get to get out your winter coats, your winter clothes, but, but you're not dying. You're not dying. Let me see if I can get what the average winter temperature is. Let me switch this over real quick. Transition. So as you can see here, in January, we have a high of 51, low of 27. In February, we have highs of 53, lows of 31. In March, we have highs of 65, lows of 41. And in December, we have highs of 52, lows of 31. 31, 27, 31, 41 for our lows. So January is our coldest month, according to currentresults.com. And then December, we have a high of 52, 51, 53, and 65 with March having the highest highs, which makes sense because that's the start of spring. When you're looking at data from currentresults.com, currentresults.com. So, pro number five, mild winners. Con number five. Con number five. It has to do with traffic again. Con number five has to do with traffic again. And it's, for some reason, about half the drivers in Oklahoma, they're not tailgating you. They're not, they're not purposefully trying to make you mad and tailgate you. That's just how they drive. It's super weird. Like, they've got to be right up on you, on the, on the, uh, right behind your car. And it's, that's, that's just what they think they need to do. I, I guess they didn't go to driver's ed. They don't know the two one thousandths rule. That was from 96. So if it's changed, if it's not, if it's not, if they don't have the two one thousandths rule anymore, please, um, please disregard that. But that was what I was taught back in 1996 is, uh, to give yourself two one thousandths in between the car in front of you and you that way you have time to break if they need to break for an emergency 
But it, 50% of the people don't do that here in Oklahoma, in my experience. They, they just feel like they have to drive right behind you. It took me a while to get adjusted to that. But once it, and especially out in the rural highways, especially out in the rural highways, like I'll be, I'll be showing homes or, or going home. Cause I live out in rural Oklahoma and for some reason, uh, people just get up on me and I, and I go ahead when I know that there's getting ready to be the, the, the passing lines on the highway where people can drive around and pass me, I will slow down five miles below the speed limit to let them pass. And they just don't do it. They don't do it. They stay there. And I don't know why. It's like you have plenty of time to pass me. Why are you, why are you doing that? And it's just their thing. Like, like they just pull up behind you and start doing it. It's weird. So don't get mad at them. Fifty percent of the people just drive that way. And then of course every now and then you have mean people driving like that on you. But it's okay. Just dial nine one one. Let the highway patrol know, and there'll probably be a trooper down the road. You know, five ten miles down the road, and they'll be able to keep an eye out and see them doing it and then give them a citation and say don't be mean to other drivers that's not nice don't don't do that to other drivers pro number six we have a great science museum and zoo in oklahoma city area and tulsa has some great museums too they have the aquarium up there in jinx in the tulsa area there are lots and lots of cool museums and and uh uh, not just like the Oklahoma City Zoo, but like driving through zoos. They're, I guess they're private zoos. I, I, I don't know. I need to educate myself more on this. But you can go to Arbuckle Wilderness and drive through that and feed the animals in the uh, Stillwater. And even in Lincoln County, they've got places where you can take the kiddos and they can like pet animals and tons and tons of places to horse ride. Lots of great museums. Uh, historic museums, Cowboy Hall of Fame and Western Heritage Museum. We have the Softball Museum. We have the Firefighters Museum. Uh, over in the Adventure District in Oklahoma City, tons of museums. Every single city has different types of museums. Um, Oklahoma City also has um, the Modern Arts Museum downtown over by... What is that place where people go and do plays at and do the opera at and the ballet at? Civic Center. That's what it is. Over by the Civic Center. I love plays. Plays are awesome. And we've got some great plays in Oklahoma. You gotta you definitely need to read the parents' guide about them. Though, I mean, if you if you've gone to plays before, you know what I'm talking about there. Because um, sometimes plays can be a little little too far over the line, but that's that's what they do. But but still that's that's not good. Um, so definitely if you're gonna take the kiddos, make sure it's kiddo play. Don't take kiddos to an adult play. Every single city, every single town, I think, that I know of has some sort of cool little museum uh, about the town and the town's history. So lots of great stuff to do as far as that with the kiddos, especially to stay out of the heat during the summer months. Because like I said, in Oklahoma, you know, we get 110 degrees. There's been some 120 degree uh, times. It, it does get hot in the summers in Oklahoma. So pro number six, museums and zoos con number six for some reason and i'm sure this is in every state but for some reason when you go to sell your house you need the hoa to tell the title company hey all his bills are paid in full and that he's good to go he or she is good to go to sell the home well the hoa charges for that like like and 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 i understand that it takes someone to look it up but like what like you're paying HOA dues why don't they just give that letter to the title company you're already paying annual dues all they're doing is opening up your account in the county software and say yep paid in full that's that's it but you've got to pay for that letter and that letter it keeps going up it keeps going up more and more and more it used to be $25 when I first started real estate now I've seen some $220 HOA letters like that's crazy but um HOA people should be able to get together and get that cost knocked down for the neighborhood. But um, the HOA letter is a con when living in Oklahoma. When you have to sell your house, you've got to provide the title company a letter saying you're paid a full. And that letter can cost you 100 to $200 sometimes. So HOA letters paid in full when you sell your house. Con number six. Pro number seven. This is a freedom state. This is a freedom state. We are 
all red here. There wasn't one county that voted blue in the last two elections, I believe, two elections. You have to verify that on your own, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Freedom State. The governor, the state legislature, the judicial system, they all rule constitutionally. They all follow the Constitution. So if you're moving here and you, you want to make sure that whatever your political views are or anything like that um, align with what you're looking for, because if you're looking for blue state, like environment this is not it oklahoma is a red state and pro number seven oklahoma is a pro state con number seven con number seven we have tractors on the road sometimes oh my gosh and and i get it farmers gotta drive their tractors around totally get that but on our oklahoma is laid out in a grid system like the roads go east and west and they go north and south if you're not on a major highway and if, you're, and if you're on one of the street roads, the county roads or anything like that, you could get stuck behind a tractor. And if you and that tractor are going the same direction, sometimes there's not room for that tractor to pull over. So you'll be behind that tractor until they need to pull over or, or until they go a different direction. We do get tractors on the road. They are uh, a vital part of um, Oklahoma farming. So, FYI, look out for tractors on the road. Pro number eight. Pro number eight. We have friendly people in Oklahoma. We have, uh, I'd say, 70% of the people are friendly in Oklahoma. You'll get waves when you're driving down the road. You'll get uh, nods when you're walking down the street. You'll get hollows. Um, if you visit one of our churches, you'll definitely get lots of welcomes and lots of hugs and Lots of good you're here, brother, good you're here, sister type area. Oklahoma is a friendly state. Con number eight, windmills. I don't, I don't, I don't get them. Um, and I'm talking about the great big energy windmills, not the cool farm water windmills, but I'm talking about the great big energy windmills. Our state does have windmills now, and they are located in some of the prairie areas. So you'll be driving along, enjoying the landscape, and you see a giant windmill out of nowhere. And it's a windmill farm. Like, like you'll see hundreds of them. And it's like, oh, yeah, look at that. That's, uh, that's great. So we do have windmills in this state. So be sure when you're moving to Oklahoma, if you're not a fan of windmills, um, you, 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 wanna, you can Google where are the windmills located. Let's do that real quick. Let's do that together. Okay. We are on Wikipedia transition over so looking at wikipedia uh the wind power in western half of the state 2017 wind grid 7500 megawatts supplying almost a third of the state's generated electricity um so some of the wind farms in oklahoma include blue canyon wind farm centennial wind farm red hills wind farm and then the weatherford wind energy Center. So let's take a look at those real quick. So Blue Canyon Wind Farm is north of Lawton. North of Lawton is the Blue Canyon Wind Farm. The Centennial Wind Farm is one of the largest in Oklahoma. And it's out near Fort Supply. Out near Fort Supply. The Red Hills Wind Farm. The Red Hills Wind Farm is in Roger Mills in Custer County. Over near Elk City, Oklahoma. Over near Elk City, Oklahoma. And then was there one more? Weatherford. The Weatherford Wind Energy City. So con number eight. Con number eight, windmills. We got them. If you want to live on the plains, be sure to check where you're moving to. Or else you might be subject to some windmills that you were not expecting. Pro number nine. When living in Oklahoma, we have pretty affordable public universities. OU, UCO, and Oklahoma State University are all what seem to me pretty affordable public universities. Let's go ahead and take a look at their tuition rates for 2021. I pull those up real quick. Okay, let's start in no particular order, no particular order at all. Let's look at the university costs. Oh, look at those poor kids. 
Um, like I said, Oklahoma is a freedom state, and I believe we just the state legislature just passed a mandate saying that no, um, no one can force people to wear masks. But you'll want to verify that on your own, of course. Um, but those poor kids, that's 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 poor 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 kids. They shouldn't be having to do that. Okay, so let's go over to admin, and then let's see what the current costs are for. Oh, right here, cost. Okay, there's OU's cost. Let's go over here. There's OSU's cost. Why isn't UCO's cost as easy to see as everyone else's? UCO, it'll typically be less expensive than OU and OSU. Use a search bar. Okay, perfect. Oh, wow. This is interesting. Wow, I may have been way off. OSU may be less expensive. Okay, average cost at UC at OU. OU. Why can't it just give me the number? Okay, everybody, verify all the info on your own, of course. I am not a university liaison or anything like that. But when you're looking at tuition costs at OU, you're looking at $159.60 per credit hour per credit hour. When you're looking at the cost of tuition at Oklahoma State University, and remember, this doesn't include fees. Fees are still included. You know, if you got a science class, you're gonna have lab fees and everything like that. But at OSU, your cost per hour is 151.25. 151.25, which is about $8 less expensive, $8 less expensive at OSU. And then Edmonds tuition, oh, there we go. Each department has its different cost of tuition. It looks like University of Central Oklahoma's cost is a third of the cost of the other colleges. So that's something to keep in mind. So I feel like our public education is fairly, fairly inexpensive. And that's why I put that as pro number nine. Pro number nine. Affordable universities. Affordable universities. So let's go over to speed number nine, speed number nine. We've got speed traps in Oklahoma. They're the most annoying thing in the world. Look, I get, I get, and I'm talking about like the weird speed traps where you'll be driving in Oklahoma on some of our state highways and there'll be one little sign that I think is maybe 18 inches by 12 inches. It may be a little bit larger than that, but it says uh, reduce speed ahead, reduce speed ahead. And it is one little sign. I mean, let me, let me give you the benefit of that. Let's say it's, 24 inches by 18 inches. Let's say it's that big. That's the biggest that it could be. The biggest at all. But it says reduce speed ahead. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're going from 55 to 45 to 35 in, in no time. In, in no time whatsoever. And all of a sudden, there's a police officer sitting there at the beginning of the town just waiting for you. Because he knows. He knows what's getting ready to happen. And they pull you over. Like, why? We need, like, flashing signs. We need, like... Because the signs, they're white and black. So sometimes you don't even know they're there if the trees have grown over them. And and that's that's really annoying. If trees have grown over them and they're still hitting you like that because you don't have time to slow down, that's super annoying. But we do have speed traps in Oklahoma. Con number nine, speed traps. Pro number 10, farmer's markets. Yes, yes, we have some great farmer's markets in every city, in every town in Oklahoma, super nice. Well, not every city, every town, but in most, in most cities and towns, we have some great farmer's markets. So theoretically, you can go get some farm fresh stuff. You know, you're hoping that they didn't just stop by the grocery store and put it in a neat container to make it look like it's farm fresh. But uh, I don't I don't know if there's any regulations on that. Um, con number 10, con number 10, we have brush fires. We have brush fires. And let's go look at the data on that real quick. Okay, so going to the Forestry Department's website, Forestry Department's website, looking at brush fires in Oklahoma, current wildfire situation, burn ban info. So this is the burn ban map. Oh my gosh, these interactive maps that Oklahoma have are awesome. So it looks like there's no burn bans in the whole state. And that's because for the last week and a half, it has just been raining. It has just been raining, but we do get fires in Oklahoma, especially during the summer. During the summer, you're going to want to make sure that um, that you're not burning when you're not supposed to be because uh, Oklahoma does get brush fires. And with it being such a windy state, 
with it being such a windy state if a little bit of fire gets out of hand and that wind catches it it's just gone it's just gone. there's been times when i'm driving down the turnpike and they're taking people off the turnpike and making them drive the back county roads away from the fire because the fire is so bad that you can't even see so we do get brush fires here in oklahoma like you do in other states pro number 11 folks pro number 11 of 15 in reasons to move to oklahoma we've got decent highways we've got decent highways decent interstates and decent turnpikes the turnpikes by far are the best but they should be because we have to pay for them um just get a pike pass if you're going to be doing any commuting daily in oklahoma just get a pike pass it'll make your job It'll make you drive around Oklahoma City so much better. We do have great highways in Oklahoma. Now, let's go over con number 11. Wind and hell. Wind and hell. And hell, I'm talking about the little balls of ice that could be, you know, dime size all the way up to softball size to grapefruit size. There has been times in Oklahoma where grapefruit size hell has come. Whoa, could you imagine that? Great. No, I, I couldn't. I, be, I lived here, but I couldn't, but it wasn't in my area, luckily. But that's just crazy. Grapefruit size hill in Oklahoma. Yes, uh, chunks of ice falling from heaven, smashing everything underneath. I've had one car. Yeah, just one car. One car totaled by hell before. And that was probably seven years ago. My wife and I were doing some shopping at the um, Dick's. Yeah, Dick's Sporting Goods store over off across from Quill Springs Mall, and my my car just got trashed. We just got trashed. But but we had plenty of time to know it was coming. We re, we received two severe weather alerts before it came. Um, we just did not know how severe it was. We did not know that. But we were inside Dick's when it was going on, so everything was fine. It sounded crazy. Um, and wind and hell is con number eleven. Pro. Number 12, pro number 12, we have we have theme parks here in Oklahoma. We've got Frontier City. We've got Whitewater Bay. We've got, I think we have a Great Wolf Lodge too in Oklahoma. Let me check that out real quick. Clinton, Clinton, waterzoo.com, indoor water park in Clinton, Oklahoma. We've got Frontier City in Oklahoma, and then Oklahoma City, and we've got Whitewater Bay. Hurricane Harbor, uh, I guess it's no longer called Whitewater Bay. But we have that in Oklahoma City too. So we've got some great theme parks in Oklahoma City. If you want to go to an indoor water park out in Clinton, Oklahoma, you've got the Water Zoo indoor water park. You've got this Frontier City over off of I-35, I-44 interchange in Oklahoma City. And then over at I-40 and the um, Lake After Parkway, I-44 interchange down in the southwest side, the west side of Oklahoma City. You've got what used to be called Whitewater Bay, but now it's called Hurricane Harbor OKC. So pro number 11, nope, pro number 12. Pro number 12 for Oklahoma is some decent theme parks, some decent theme parks. Con number 12 in Oklahoma. Con number 12 in Oklahoma goes without saying we do have tornadoes. We do have tornadoes in Oklahoma. When you're looking at this map, you can go and see where tornadoes are at in Oklahoma. That way, when you're moving here, you definitely want to know where they typically go because that's, if you don't have a storm shelter, I think you can get them for like $3,200 last I heard, but prices have been increasing in all construction over the last year. So that could be a lot different now. Con number 12, tornadoes. Pro number 13 in Oklahoma is libraries we got libraries in every city almost it is super great um all the amount of libraries that we have for the kiddos to be able to go and read books and a lot of your libraries too they have story time so kids can go and listen to the library and read books to them so libraries is pro number 13 in on this video for the state of oklahoma and your oklahoma city metro libraries are some great libraries great great internet at those libraries too if you need super fast data a lot of them have gigabyte in my experience i haven't done any speed checks on them but when i go there and i'm using their internet super fast super fast so pro number 13 libraries for the state of oklahoma con number 13 goes along with the wind and hell goes along with the tornado our property insurance costs are super high. Property insurance costs are super high. Let's take a look at it real quick on this infograph. Okay, so I'm on insurance.com 
insurance.com and I thought they had a picture. Average rate for homeowners insurance for 300K homes, Oklahoma is the worst. Oklahoma is the worst with Kansas being a close second. So when you do move to Oklahoma, you do want to prep yourself for the property insurance costs because we are the highest when you're when you're comparing rates according to insurance.com. So con number 13 is super high cost of property insurance. Pro number 14. YMCA's. We have a great YMCA presence in the state of Oklahoma. Who doesn't like being able to work out for the whole family for a super affordable cost? Let me show you what the cost is at the YMCA for a family pass real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So, so here is a map of all the YMCA's in Oklahoma according to YMCA's website. So you can see they're located mainly in the OKC metro area. You've got one down here in Chickasha it looks like. Or is that Lawton? That might be Lawton. And then one up in Stillwater. Oh, so, so one down in Chickasha, one over in Moore, which is great. A uh, couple over here on the northwest side, which are awesome. A couple downtown. I've been to those. Those are awesome. One up in Guthrie. Never been to that one. One in Stillwater. It's it's okay. I haven't been there since the remodel. Last time I was there, they were getting ready to remodel. But let's take a look at their rate. And then let's look at adults. And let's say there's two. And let's say there's three dependents. And you're looking at $65 a month, $65 a month, according to that. So for $65 a month, two adults and three dependents can go enjoy the YMCA. That's super affordable. That is super affordable right there. The YMCA is pro number 14. And then let's scooch over to con number 14. Con number 14 for living in Oklahoma is Pretty bad rural internet. Pretty bad rural internet. Now there have been some smaller carriers step up, like uh, Pro Value and HughesNet, and definitely uh, add add better internet to the rural areas of Oklahoma. But there's still, you know, you can't get Gigablast everywhere in Oklahoma. You, there, you can't. In the major metros, there's typically Gigablast. Um, there's typically fiber. There's typically high speed internet. But in the rural areas. There's internet, but I would not consider it high speed. So something to keep in mind if you're moving to Oklahoma and you want to live on a little bit of acreage, you want to live away from the cities a little bit, if internet is important to you, if you're a remote worker, you want to pay attention to what you can get in those areas. So con number 14 is we don't have the best internet everywhere. So pro number 15, and I love this one, especially during the winter months and the summer months. Pro number 15, thank you for sticking around for this whole time. Pro number 15 in Oklahoma, especially during the winter months and the summer months, is indoor gun ranges. We've got indoor gun ranges in Oklahoma. We've got uh, one right in the middle of Oklahoma City, H&H &H Gun Range. We've got one over in Mustang, which is Big Boys. Dang it. I can't believe I forgot the name of that. Let me let me check that real quick. Yeah, Big Boys. Okay, perfect. Whew. Now I don't feel silly. Big Boys Gun Range. And then over on the uh, north side of Oklahoma City, northeast, not really east, but north side of Oklahoma City, you've got Wilshire Guns. We've got three amazing indoor gun ranges that uh, you can, you, they're climate controlled, so you're not freezing, you're not dying, and you're and they're indoors, a lot peaceful. And then we have a lot of outdoor gun ranges too that you can get memberships to and use those at your leisure. But uh, indoor gun ranges is my pro number 15 for when you're living in Oklahoma. And con number 15, uh, con number 15, we also, not only do we have some of the highest property insurance costs in the whole United States, but our car registration costs are towards the top. The car registration costs are pretty pricey here in Oklahoma. So whenever you're renewing your tag or you just picked up a new vehicle, keep in mind that sticker price also includes registration, tax, tag, title, and tax fees too. So pay attention to that. You don't want to spend every last bit of cash that you have on a car and then forget that within 30 days you've got to go register it. And we are towards the upper end of high car registration costs in Oklahoma. Whew. If you're moving to, moving within Oklahoma or relocating to Oklahoma, give us a call. A group of agents that I work with and I want to earn your business and help you with all your real estate needs. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my new videos that come through. And as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you watching. Josh Bart at eXp Realty. I'll see you guys on the next clip.
If you're thinking about moving to or relocating to Oklahoma, this video is something you might want to watch. I want that raise up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I've got it on auto uh, track. And of course, it was, uh, it was a little messed up. So Oklahoma, it's just not that, um, that movie, that 1955 remake of that uh, play, Green Lily Lilac or something. Let me... <laughs> That's not right. Let me get the true info. <sighs> okay, let me start over. Con number four. Let me add some numbers to these so I don't lose my place real quick. Just give me one second. This being a live video, you're seeing a lot of behind the scenes things that I do as I shoot my actual videos. <laughs> one second, just adding the numbers here so that I don't mess up on our numbers. Let me see if I can see my comments real quick. Comment down below on, um, okay, no questions. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to add questions. I don't know. This is the first time I'm doing it on Facebook Live. So, of course, there'll be some mistakes. Um, one second. Need some water. Got to get my water. Got to hydrate. Be sure to hydrate. Okay. Um, going back. Um, I keep hitting my mic. I, 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 I need to get a different mic stand because this one doesn't seem to be working out. Um, but...